Okay guys and dolls, welcome back to Honey Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we're doing a little update on where we are with the Starfield. So I just wanted to show that A, this machine has absolutely become like my go-to machine for really anything in our workflow. Um, we're doing a couple of things at the moment. So we have obviously got the T1000 bust. We had to, this came cut up in some really weird ways. So the head comes off uh, and is life size, just to be clear. Uh, and then this torso uh, came in four sections. So there was a section, oh sorry, uh, in five sections. So the back of it was cut for some reason. Then you have front in two sections and then the bottom in two sections as well. And then the badge was separate. Um, the head is incredibly thick. So it was hollowed, so I didn't mess about with it. Unfortunately, what I didn't realise was that the person who hollowed it left it about 10 millimetres thick. So the head was incredibly heavy, and as a result, I had some support failures. That's my settings, not the machine, but again, I should have just paid more attention. And the base is actually done in FDM, but there's no way that the model keys to the actual base. The person who did this model didn't want you to be able to print it. <laughs> it wasn't his thing. And then we're also working with, we've got a barber's that's close to us, um, and he wanted a bunch of Onai masks, sometimes called Kabuki masks, um, so that he's got a tattoo parlor that he is setting up in the back, and he wants his tattoo artists to, um, to paint each one of these, and then he's gonna hang them on his walls. Mike has already painted his Kabuki mask, which as you can see, looks absolutely ace. I'll get some close-ups of these in a minute, um, then I also just have one more thing that I want to show, which is this little bad boy. So this is the uh, this is just the blade part of uh, the blade from one of the swords from Lord of the Rings. I'm going to put some close-ups on the group, and I'll do a close-up in a minute. This was printed. This was printed on its blade's edge, facing up. Um, that's not the way I would normally have printed it. But I really wanted to show how this would do with lines, uh, with layer lines, with surface finish, and with the fact that this is a triangle going up to then a triangle going in, and all the detail that it's captured on the actual blade itself. So I thought this was a really good example. Um, these are, everything here is all done on the star field except for the FDM base. We've tried printing parts of this on another machine that we've got, and it just wouldn't print. I don't know what it was, I don't know if it was the settings, I don't know if it was the file, I don't know if it was the printer, but Starfield absolutely chewed through it. It was, it was just brilliant. <laughs> so, okay, so let's do some close-ups of what we've got here, so we can just get out of the way of, of, of sort of how well this machine actually did. Right, okay, so this is the Bane mask. This was actually done in a different resin. So this was done in a Sunlu resin, and you can see that this is absolutely fantastic. Support settings really nailed on this one. Like, there's hardly any support scarring on here at all. This is life-size, so this is wearable. Um, the wash station did a fantastic job of cleaning this as well, and really, really nice job. You can see here that the texture is absolutely perfect on there. Then we have a more Kabuki style mask. So this is done in the Starfield resin. So let's just get right in there. You can see again, done a really, really nice job. A Little bit more support scarring on this one, just where they went into the T, so it's gonna need a little bit of sanding and things. But even if we get up close to the, let's try getting up close to the, come on. There we go, the smooth textures on the nose there. Come on. There we go, smooth textures on the side there. Absolutely gorgeous. Really, really nice quality there. 
We've got the same on this one. So again, another Kabuki mask there. Really nice. So again, on the sides here, this is about a kilo. So this is heavy. These sides are completely solid um, and it's made it really dense. Um, we've also got this one here. So this one, again, done absolutely gloriously. This is the one where the horns were a real problem. Now it's done a beautiful job of the horns that are on there, despite how heavy they are. But this is over two kilos. This is over two kilos of resin um, without supports. Like we've weighed it, it's really, really heavy, really dense. We've got the one here that Mike painted, so I'll just give you a quick close up of that. You can see he went for like sort of the bone effect on the teeth and the horns there. This is where we had the issue. So this is again an issue with the STL file. There's just this weird rock hard plate that's sitting in the middle of it. I've absolutely no reason to, I don't know why it's there. I don't know why it looks like that. It's a, it's a fault with the model. Um, but you can see down the side there, the quality and finish on this, absolutely brilliant. And then last but not least, we have this guy. So this guy, again, you can actually see that he's not actually wearable. We did try to hollow him and he is hollow, but he's still one and a half kilos. So he's still really, really dense. You can see nice on the nice quality on the sides there. And then we will take a look at our Terminator. Well, I'm glad that's recorded that I caught that. <laughs> Oh, glad I wore my brown pants today. So let's just take a little look at the Terminator now. So we'll tighten that up a little bit. So right here, this is a join line, not a shift in layers. Again, this thing was cut absolutely appallingly. Exactly the same down here as well. This is another join line. The part that I'm really impressed with is how his face came out. So the skin texture on this is absolutely smooth as anything. And bearing in mind how heavy this head is, I'm incredibly impressed that that came out at all. So he's gonna come out really, really nicely. Mike's got a decent amount of filling and sanding to do before he can uh, before he can start getting paint on it, but that is the Terminator there. So as you can see, it's done an absolutely stunning job on these masks. These are all large pieces. Um, these we were more con concerned about getting the style right than necessarily going with the right artists necessarily. Um, so some of these are not well-designed files at all. So the rear of Mike's Kabuki mask, for example, has just got this big solid plate that sits in the back. I've absolutely no idea why that's there, um, but it is. There's a bunch of artifacting on the inside as well. All of that is down to the file. It's really annoying. Um, that being said, I think these came out absolutely amazingly. I'm really happy with how they all look. We did all wash these in the new wash station because we had nothing else that was big enough to wash them in either. The problem is the horns. So the horns on all of these are completely solid. Um, that makes these very, very heavy. These are about uh, two kilos each, even though they are very small, there's two kilos um, in each one of these. That's a lot of force pulling down at all times. And, but every time I tried hollowing these, um, they just failed. Uh, didn't matter what printer I was trying it on because I did them on, the, on our Apex Maker and I did them on the P13 as well. Didn't matter what machine I put them on. Um, if I hollowed the horns, then the whole file failed. So it's something with the STL files. I don't know what was going on there. Um, 
but I really love these. I think these are gonna be really cool. We'll do an update video once these guys are painted by the tattoo artists, once they're up on the wall. And then we have this chap. So this is a commission piece for, um, for one of our customers. Um, one of the guys who, uh, he was the one who sponsored the original Terminator that nearly broke my soul and spirit. Uh, he really loves Terminator, so he wanted this one as well. We're gonna do this one. Uh, there's a, I think it's a sideshow model. Uh, where it's like a frosted effect because this is meant to be him when he's like when he's frozen in place um, so I really really like them I really really like the sculpt the model itself that we got appallingly designed appallingly cut um, really really annoying uh, every element of it the, 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 the Starfield did a bang up job it got the textures right and it did a really really fine job on the detail but the way this is cut and keyed and goes together, absolute garbage. Like, like genuine garbage. I, I, I hated trying to print this. Really, really complicated. Um, the base part that sort of slopes in at the back here, because obviously it's like a, a half cut bar, uh, bust, that doesn't actually key together. We had to epoxy that and then super glue it as well so that the super glue would hold it while the epoxy dried. Like, really, really, really hated it, actually. <laughs> like, a really big problem. Um, but that being said, I really do love the way this is coming out. This is coming together fantastically. Mike's gonna be painting this, um, and, uh, and we're gonna see how we get on. But that's the update video, so thanks very much for joining us. I hope you like what's here. If there's anything specific you want us to see printed and um, we're going to pop a few of the pictures of these up on the group today um, just before the video comes out uh, so yeah so don't forget to like and subscribe catch you on the next video